Zhang Wei Li or Kayla Harrison? Who has the most on the line at UFC 300? Let's talk about it. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Laura Sanko here with Dean Thomas, and we are going to talk about a couple of the lady fights on UFC 300. This insane card stacked top to bottom. We did a separate breakdown on the main event. Be sure and check that out. But I want to touch on the co-main event, and I also want to touch on the UFC debut of one Kayla Harrison. I am so excited for both of these things. But before we talk, Kayla, let's talk a little bit about this co-main event, which, frankly, it speaks to the depth of this card that the co-main event is not really getting talked about that much, Dean. I mean, it's a crazy card when the co-main event is like, not the one that's getting all the shine, even the main event. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Well, I could. I can because, like, just the rest of the card. But it's such an exciting fight. And I want to say this, too. Is it? And I had to tell her the other day because I was in the Apex and she was in there working out. And I said, I said, you know, and she speaks English pretty good. I said, I said, you know, Whaley, I said, I've never been in here and not seen you working out. Yeah. I have never she is in that she or not the apex the pi she's in the pi the performance institute every time i'm in there and it's not like i go there every day and just happen to go there at the same time every day i show up at random times and rarely and every time i've shown up at random times she's been in there in the middle of a workout it's the it's the almost a guarantee for me she's such a diligent student and just a psychopath when it comes to work like she puts in the work and that cannot be disputed it absolutely cannot and it is really really showing itself i think in this sort of second championship reign that she's having i i love her teaming up with john wood i love her training at the pi and you know the the first time that she had the belt and of course she had the the fights with rose and rose just had her number right but you could see you could see all the attributes you could see the talent you could see the technique and i honestly think it took rose i don't want to say humbling because it's not like Zhang Wei Li was ever some you know cocky jerk of a person but i think it took rose showing her that in martial arts everyone you know will find a nemesis that, that can best them, right? That's just, that is the that is the nature of the art. Everyone is capable of being beaten. It took her going through that. And now, Whaley 2.0 is unstoppable, in my opinion. She way, has right? added the grappling, and it is scary. Seems that way, right? But I have my theory on Whaley in terms of her her little rivalry with, uh, with Rose. Uh, there's one thing about like when you live in when you're from China, right? And they never really had like this major MMA scene up until a couple of years ago. And I think that when she first came out on the scene, even though she was un like she seemed like she was unstoppable, I remember her having a record of like 20 wins and, yeah. and one loss. But she's still way out in the outskirts. She wasn't in the community like she is now, and she had to have some doubts as to whether she can compete. Just in the back of her mind, like. I know I'm good here, but am I am I going to be good there? And I think when she got knocked out from by Rose the first time, it brought up them demons of her doubt. Mm -hmm. That's why I think when she fought her the second time, because you notice like when she got knocked out by Rose, she shaved her head. She had so much respect for Rose. It felt like it almost looked like she fell in love with Rose. Mm -hmm. And then when she fought her the second time, she fought her as if she had some kind of hero worship. And then... She lost that, but then when she came back, and I think when she beat Yoana, I think she, and then she moved over and started working with and being in the States, I think she yeah. gained this confidence about her that now she realizes and she truly knows that she's the best in the world. Like She's the best straw weight in the world and that no one can touch her. And I think that she might have looked, she might look back at those fights with Rose and go, ah, you know what? Maybe I did give her a little bit too much respect. Well, and I, I mean, I think, if you were to tell me that Rose and Zhang Wei Li were going to have a rematch tomorrow, I would favor Zhang Wei Li, even though Rose has beaten her twice. She's just, she has improved her game to a level that is, it's so incredibly impressive that someone that far into their career um, can have noticeable visual uh, improvements in, in what they're doing out there. The way that she, 
absolutely big sister to Amanda Lemos, Bell oh, Bell. I know. I know. Bell Crazy. Bell. She's and Amanda so Lemos is no joke. She is I a know. strong woman. She is a power puncher. Like she was knocking people out. And Zhang Wei Li made her look like a little rag doll. I remember watching that and thinking that this should be closer. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't as close as it should have been. Yeah. And Way so to now out there and put it on her. Exactly. And so now she's facing Yan Shonan, who, you know, in her own right, I feel like Yan Shonan is peaking right now. I mean, Yan was the first Chinese uh, female fighter signed to the UFC roster. She has been here longer than Zhang Wei Li and has really had to find her footing and grow in the UFC. Um, and I feel like she's at the peak of her powers right now. I mean, she's coming out a knockout of Jessica Andrade. We don't see that very often. We all know how tough Jessica Andrade is. Yan Shonan versus Zhang Wei Li is the perfect matchup for right now. And it's China versus China, which is so, I don't, I'm not sure the more casual fan understands how special that really is. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it makes me wonder, uh, you know, you said we weren't talking about this. I wonder if you went over to China, like on commercials, they had like, they're talking about this fight and like this may be a big thing in China. I'm hoping it is because this is such, this is the biggest fight in the division that they could have made. And Make no mistake about it. I know what I just said about Weili Zhan, but this will not be a walk in the park for her. Yan Xiaonan is better than that. And like you mm -hmm. said, she's peaking. She has the ability to knock other females out. She has the ability to knock Weili Zhan out. If Weili Zhan makes a mistake, she could get knocked out. This is not going to be an easy fight for Weili Zhan. For as good as she is, as I think Yan Xiaonan understands the opportunity that she has, she understands the position that she's been been given. And I think she's going to go out there and take full advantage of it. Yeah, she's been at Team Alpha Male for a little over two years now. And what a what a perfect place for her to go. And I I actually I talked to Uriah about her on a handful of occasions. And it's just cool to see how many Chinese fighters have made their way to Team Alpha Male now. They're, it's like it's 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 like this little uh, magnet for Chinese fighters. A lot of the guys coming through Road to UFC are stopping through um, through uh, Team Alpha Male. And when you look at the footage of them grappling, you can tell that Uriah is taking special personal interest in her success. Right? Like we talked about this in um, a video the other week. It matters at this level that a coach will take time to look at your game. Not just have a practice that you're in, but look at your game. And he's spending time rolling with her. So he, he's actually feeling one-on-one -on -one like, oh, you need to be heavier here. You need to do this. Because obviously the grappling is something that's going to get tested in this fight. But I love the fact that she's at Team Alpha Male. And what a better person to have as a coach and a mentor than Uriah Faber. And obviously he's bigger than she is, but like he's a smaller dude. So it works well that they can actually, you know, go together and, and have sparring rounds and have grappling rounds together. Well, and plus when you talk about the the history of alpha meds, they've had fighters in, in these spots before in big spots and championship level fights. And Uriah knows how to prepare his fighters for these moments from a mental standpoint, a physical standpoint, everything, even down to just the, you know, just what the week is going to be like, he knows how to handle these things for his fighters. So, this won't be an uncomfortable situation in terms of like her being ignorant to what the week is going to be about and not knowing what's going on. Yeah. Like even though this is her first shot at a title, Uriah is going to be sure to make it as comfortable for her as possible as she goes out there and represents Team Alpha Male as best as she can. You know, they gave us an assignment on the Wayne Show to like do our list of <clears throat> our our top country versus country um, championship fights. And besides the obvious USA versus USA or Brazil versus Brazil, which there were some some good ones, I can't I honestly can't think of many other countries that have had an opportunity to have two representatives at a, in a championship level fight. And to your point earlier, China is still just now developing their MMA scene. We've got the the PI in Shanghai. We've got the road to UFC, which is sort of like contender series for the whole um, region of Asia. It's, it's a really big deal to have these women in this spot. And it's, 
like you, I, I kind of, I'd be curious to know how big of a deal it is back home uh, in China. But the the footage I have seen of like when Zhang Weili does public appearances, there's so big crowds. And you think about, I don't know the population of China off the top of my head, but I know it's many billion people. Think about the number of mixed martial artists that could be being born today in, in China. Like that is a country with a rich martial arts history with a lot of people. And if she can get that movement going, I mean, she'll be the pioneer. I know she get that movement going. But the one thing you don't want in China is me over there because that number going to be higher. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop. Dave about need to go to make some, some MMA fighters over yeah. in China. <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> or you need to go to China. Or I need to go right. to China. <laughs> I think we're scheduled for later this year. I'll be interested to see if you're on that card. <laughs> no, no, UFC don't fly me international. They don't trust me. <laughs> uh, before we move on, I want to get your your thoughts on how this fight's going to go. Um, like I said, it won't be easy. I think the first couple of rounds will be close, but I think just the speed and the tenacity of Weili Zhan and just her confidence, I think it's going to wear on Yao Shanan. Yeah. I think that she just won't be able to keep up. I think she's, you know, they're going to go toe to toe for a little bit, first, second round. But I think as the third round hits, Whaley John just starts to take over. And I think she just wipes her out in those uh, last couple of rounds. It'll be a decision. I don't think she finishes her, but I think she just established herself, establishes herself as the clear and better fighter of the two. Yeah. I think she's going to definitely push the, uh, push the grappling as well. And it'll be interesting to see, what uh, what Jan is able to do with that. I, I wanted to include some thoughts on the Kayla Harrison fight in this video as well, because it struck me, um, you know, the, there's a there's a few ladies fights on this card, but it's in some ways, Kayla Harrison has more to lose on this fight in the, excuse me, on this card than even Zhang Wei Li does. Like Zhang Wei Li has a belt on the line, but Kayla Harrison has a career on the line, right? She has to A, make weight, which she has never made before as an MMA fighter, um, and B, go out there and beat a former champion, ideally in a very impressive fashion, show, so that she can make a big splash in a brand new division, in a brand new promotion. That's a lot to ask, especially that first battle of the weight cut. It's a big one. Yeah, no doubt about that. And I think that... You... <laughs> For as hard as it's going to be, if there's anybody who can handle it, is somebody like Kayla Harrison. Yeah. Like we know that she can handle adversity. We know she can battle, and she'll fight tooth and nail to get what she wants. So I think that's great for her. I, I think one thing that we also have to consider is Holly. Like we we know what Holly's capable of. We know that Holly always fights her best fight. But at 42, like when is it going to be time for her mm -hmm. to start looking 42? Like, I don't know. Like, is this going to be that time? That's that's the one thing we have to take into consideration. Is this going to be the time where Holly just kind of, now she looks 42? Yeah. If not, I think Kayla Harrison could be in trouble because I mean, of the weight cut. A hundred percent. I mean, that's, that. I think, you know, a, a peak Kayla Harrison versus um, Holly Holm, I, I, I heavily favor Kayla. However, there are a few things that really do play into Holly's favor. One of them being the fact that we're in this big cage, right? And Holly is so good at moving and being really hard to find. And that's what Kayla needs to do in this fight. She needs to be able to find Holly. There are very few people who are as good at jabbing and moving than, than Holly Holm. She's really tough to pin down. And that's all. that's the mission that Kayla Harrison is on. Find her, pin her down, get her down get on top, pound her out. That's Kayla Harrison's MO. If Kayla is at all diminished from this weight cut, which she could very easily be, that's going to be really tough to do. It'd be really tough to do. But as you said, Kayla, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have a favorite fighter in terms of like who I want to win this fight. I love Holly so much as a person and as a fighter. And she was an amazing champion, but I love, love, love Kayla Harrison as a person and as a fighter. Did you, were you at ATT when she was there or did you guys miss each other? No, no, I was there when she was there. Um, I didn't, apparently, you know, I, I heard later that she was supposed to work with me, but it, it just never worked out. Um, she 
found Mike Brown early and yeah. they had such good chemistry and good relationship that, um, and she's done great things with, with him and he's really brought out the best to her. Um, is she, I may have done a couple of classes and like group classes and she was in it. She was a great student, just yeah. always very asking questions and just into it. So um, I'm just, I'm familiar with her work ethic. And that's the one thing that impresses me most about her is that she's an Olympian through and through and people go, yeah, how's she going? You think she's going to make weight? I go, there's no doubt in my mind. She's going to make weight. And the only way she doesn't make weight is if the commission tells her to stop, but there's no doubt in my mind that she's not going to make the weight, but how she performs the next day is what really questions me. And that's not up to her at that point. You know, like you can will, you can will yourself so far, but yeah. if your body gives out on you, like there's only so much you can do. Yeah. I was, I was so excited to see her brought over, um, in free agency to the UFC. Cause it's like, I just, it was just same thing as Justin Gaethje. Like when I was watching Justin Gaethje in the world series of fighting, he was just running through people. You can't help but they like, but what would he do in the UFC? I just want to see him in the UFC. And that's how I felt about Kayla for a long time. When she kept, when she went over to Invicta for one fight, I had a chance. I called that fight and she made 145 at that point. And remember, people who are not familiar with her have to understand when she was an Olympic judoka, she was doing judo in the, in the 170s. She fought primarily at PFL at 155. That's where she won the million dollars. That's where she looked amazing um, in that organization. When she fought Invicta, she did make it down to 145. But I remember her telling me at the time, she's like, there's no freaking way I can make 135. Now, I'm not holding her to that because to your point, if Kayla Harrison says she can do something, she's going to do it and she can do it. It's just a matter of what it will look like, you know, for her when she has done it. But she has had enough time to prepare for this. She's been eyeing this opportunity for much, much longer than it has even been, you know, written down on paper. <laughs> the thing that stuck out to me when she fought Invicta, though, was like what she can do when you give her access to elbows, because people forget mm -hmm. that you don't get to elbow in the PFL. And when she was in Invicta and she was allowed to elbow, I don't, I'm forgetting the name of her opponent, but that woman looked like she took a hatchet to the face. Well, if she's going to do this to Holly, she's got to pin Holly down early and get it done early, I believe. Because I think the longer this fight goes, the more she's going to feel that weight. And you also got to yeah. understand this too, is that she's not in her normal body. She's not going to be in her normal body. Like you said, if she was competing at the, in the 170s in judo and then her entire career in the PFL was at 155, that's 20 pounds that she's used to carrying around. So she's had a style. She's developed a style that relies on that extra 20 pounds. So now being 20 pounds lighter, being at 135, she's going to have to fight a little differently. And we don't know what that looks like yet. I don't know. I don't know if, if she, if she knows what that looks like yet. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like, how she fights at 135, what that style looks like at 135. Like, is, does she still have the judo tosses? Is she still able to move her opponents around and, and disrupt their balance without that extra 20 pounds? Is she still going to be able to get on top? and be massive on top without that extra 20 pounds. Like, we don't know what that looks like. Because Holly is physical. Holly and Holly's, and we know what Holly looks like at, at that weight. And yeah. Holly's used to that weight. And she's physical at that weight. And she's fast at that weight. And she's long at that weight. So we know what that looks like. So we don't know what it looks like with Kayla Harrison. So it'll be interesting to see. I think the world will be watching when Kayla Harrison steps inside that octagon. They should be, because she's going to be a very interesting injection into the bantamweight division if she's able to uh to get past Holly Holm, you know, a former a former champion. That would be a big big feather in her cap and put her right at the top of the division from the get-go. Did you see um the piece that UFC did on her? I think it's called Inside UFC. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's like an 8-minute documentary about her. No, I did not see that. Highly recommend that people take a look at the the piece that UFC did on Kayla Harrison. You'll you'll understand why you want to cheer for her in the octagon and in life. Dean, thank you so much for your time, for your thoughts. We appreciate you guys. Uh, keep it locked in right here. Press like, press subscribe. We appreciate you very much trying to grow the channel. So 
You can see these other videos that I'm pointing at here. Dean, thank you guys. We'll see you next time.